In order to understand some inductor characteristics, let's take a look at this circuit here. I have 12 volts in parallel with a neon bulb and an inductor. There's a switch here, so if I close this switch, I will get the same 12 volts across the bulb and the inductor because they're in parallel. Now I don't expect this bulb to turn on because this bulb requires about 70 volts. However, when I open the switch back up, something peculiar happens. Let's take a look at the circuit. Here it is. I have a switch there going to the bulb and the inductor, which are in parallel. And they're being powered by 12 volts. So let's flip the switch on. And I'm holding it down there. Notice the bulb does not turn on. But when I let go, you saw the bulb momentarily turn on. Let's try that again. It, it's pressed. And when I let go, the bulb momentarily turns on. So why does that happen? Let's take a look at the circuit diagram again. When the switch gets closed, current flows through here and it goes into the inductor. And you can think of the inductor as storing current, sort of like the way uh, a capacitor would store voltage. So in this case, what happens when the current flows through here, it converts it and stores it by converting it into an electromagnetic field. So once that reaches its maximum point, it levels out. Now when I open up the switch, well, I still have a, a circuit here. So what happens is there's an immediate change and the current flows in the other direction. So if you look at the equation here for the voltage across the inductor, it's negative L, which is the 7 Henry's, times di dt. Well, this dt is extremely small because this change is happening really quick. So this boosts the voltage to a very large number. In fact, in some cases, it could be 10 times the number of the original voltage source. So that's how it gets boosted high enough to light this bulb we refer to that boost as a kickback voltage. Well, let's try something here. What if we lower the voltage source to, let's say, around 8 volts? And I'll do the same thing as before. I'll connect the circuit, release it, and you notice it still lights up. Well, I'm going to go down and change the voltage source much lower about one volt and now when I do it it's either faint or you can't really see it so it doesn't store enough to generate a kickback voltage to light the bulb anymore